All right, in this video, I'm going to cover meta titles and descriptions. I'm going to explain to you exactly what they are, how to write them, and give you everything you need to know about writing them so that you can actually get your website to rank on Google and start driving business through the website. So first of all, what are meta titles and descriptions? So both meta titles and descriptions are code that is on your website that's used to tell search engines what the website is about. And this is especially true with meta titles. So the meta title is otherwise known as meta tag or page title. They've got a few names that people refer to them as. It's the title that shows up in the browser tab when you open a website. And it's also the headline that shows up in the Google search results. So if you actually go into the Google search, you can see here how I've highlighted it. This is the meta title, this, this headline that you click on. So meta titles are one of what I consider the three pillars of SEO and have one of the biggest effects on how your website will actually rank. So doing them is extremely important. You don't want to overlook meta titles. Now, meta descriptions, on the other hand, are the description that shows up under the meta title in Google search. So you don't actually see them on the website, but you do see them on the Google search here. You can see I've highlighted them here. And they actually used to be a ranking factor, but they are not anymore. So they will not actually affect where your website ranks directly. So that you got to keep that in mind. You don't need to stuff keywords and things in there for that reason, but there's other reasons why you want to do certain things I'm going to cover. However, what you do need to remember is that they do affect the click through rate of your website, meaning how many people actually click on the website from the Google search page. So at the very least, what they can do is get more people to actually click on your website, which is actually obviously beneficial. And that therefore can actually indirectly affect where your website ranks as well, because your click through rate and also conversion rate are actually ranking factors these days. So that kind of indirectly does affect the ranking, but not directly. So keep that in mind. Now, rules for writing meta titles and descriptions. So meta titles, here are the rules that I would recommend you follow when writing any kind of meta titles. So first of all, they must contain the keyword that you want the page to rank for. You want to try and include as many variations of the keyword as possible. And I'm going to show you examples of how to write them in a minute after we go through this. So you'll see what I'm talking about. But for instance, if we're talking about law firm, you'd want to include the keywords like lawyer, law firm, attorney, and the area that you're trying to rank for in the meta title as well. You need to make sure that they're unique on every single page. Otherwise, you're going to get keyword cannibalization, which is going to be a major problem. I'm going to put the link to my video to keyword cannibalization above. So go watch that if you haven't already. It's a vital thing you need to know about SEO. Now, the third rule is you need to keep them under 600 pixels, which is typically 60 characters, or it gets cut off in the Google search result and potentially even rewritten by Google if it's too long. And that's not something you want. So make sure that you keep it under 600 pixels, typically 60 characters will be under 60 pixels. You can use either a character limit checker or a pixel limit checker online to find out if your meta title is long enough. Now, having a meta title that's exactly the same as the H1 headline on the page is going to reduce the chance that Google will actually rewrite the meta title. You don't have to do this, but it's something you can do if you want to be absolutely sure that what you have inputted is actually going to display on Google search. Now, the other thing is keeping the main keyword as far to the left of the meta title as possible will help to increase click through rate. So the reason why is because we read from left to right. And so as someone's scrolling down the page, they're looking on the left hand side to see the keyword that they actually typed in. So if you can get the exact keyword on the left side of the meta title, it's actually going to help get people's attention and increase the chances they'll click your website. So the other thing is the closer you can get the exact keyword that you want the page to show up for in the meta title, the more likely you are to rank. And this is especially true for long tail keywords, which can be harder to target in these instances because you need to get the whole thing in. But if you can get the whole long tail keyword in the meta title, let's say you made a specific page for it or something like that, you stand a higher chance of actually ranking. Now, the last thing you want to do is go to Google and look at the page one results to see what you should be writing in your meta title, as this is always going to tell you what Google wants to see. It's a good rule to keep in mind for SEO in general, as I mentioned in many of my videos. Everything you need to know about getting to page one is really on page one. So just have a look at what they're doing and it's going to give you a good idea of what you need to do. Hey guys, real quick, if you want to add at least 100 to $300,000 per year in new business guaranteed or you literally don't pay, go to dominatemarketing.io to book a call with us and we'll show you exactly how we'll do that for you. Back to the video. Now, meta descriptions. Again, they have no effect on the ranking directly. 
However, they do affect your click-through rate. So you wanna use the meta description to convince people to click on your website. So that's what they're good for. If you include the keyword, it's actually gonna be bold in Google search, which is more likely to catch attention. I'm gonna show you what I mean. You can see here, I've typed in car accident lawyer. And if you look here, you can see the exact keyword car accident lawyers is actually bolded by Google. You can see that they also bold similar keywords like personal injury that it thinks is related to the keyword car accident lawyer. Again, car accident lawyer. So if you keep, if you make sure you get the keywords or similar words in the meta description, it's actually gonna show up bold, which helps to grab people's attention and increases the chances they're gonna click your result. Now you can, go with not putting a meta description on your website. But if you don't, then what's gonna happen is Google's gonna make one up based on the content of your site. And usually the results of this are not very good and they read like rubbish. So you wanna make sure that you put one just so that you don't let Google do it on its own because that doesn't usually work out well. And the last thing is try and keep them under 140 characters to avoid getting them cut off as meta descriptions also have a pixel limit. There's a range somewhere between 700 and 900, I believe is what it is, but nobody knows 100% for sure. But usually if they're under 140 characters, it won't get cut off. So just keep them in that range and you should be good. So a couple of examples of writing meta titles and descriptions. So first of all, meta titles. I'll give you two examples and I'm gonna show you how to write the descriptions for these examples as well. So the first example I'm gonna go with is plumber in Sydney. So let's say you actually wanna rank a page for plumbing in Sydney. The first thing I would do is go to a tool like SEMrush, which is an SEO tool that allows you to look up keywords and things like that. Um, I'm gonna put my affiliate link in the description for SEMrush. It's the tool I recommend you use because I use it too. So if you wanna use it, click that link and you know I, I get a commission if you sign up. So just be aware of that. But I would recommend you go in, into SEMrush and use it and type in the keyword that you're trying to rank for to see what we should try and go after to get that page to rank. So here are the results. If I type in Plumber Sydney, you can see here you get Plumber Sydney, Plumbing Sydney, and a couple of other variations here, such as 24 hour plumbing, which I would put in a different page because that relates to emergency. So I wouldn't go with that one. This is something you need to have done in your keyword research to know this. If you haven't done that already, I'm gonna put my video above for keyword research for SEO. Go and do that first before you do this stuff so that you know what page is targeting what. But in this case, you can see we've got Plumber Sydney, Plumbing Sydney. If we scroll down here, you've got Plumbing Services Sydney. We've got uh, Local Plumber Sydney as well, Plumber in Sydney. So like I said, we've got these keywords in there. So let's say the name of the business was ABC Plumbing. The meta description that I would write for a page, this particular page would be something along the lines of Local Plumber in Sydney, New South Wales, ABC Plumbing. Because what this does is it gets the keyword plumbing, plumber, Sydney and local into the meta title. So it increases the chances that you're gonna rank for all of these variations. Now, you could play around with this and try and increase the click-through rate. And you could do something along the lines of putting like number one local plumber in Sydney, something like that, uh, which might help to catch a user's eye and get their attention. This is something you'll wanna test out, test it without it, then put it in, test it with it, compare the click-through rate and adjust accordingly. Now, second example, family lawyer in Houston. So again, the first thing we'd wanna do is to go into SEMrush and see what other keywords we should include. So here's a screenshot of what we get. So if we type in family lawyer Houston, these are the variations that we get. And the other thing I noticed when I was searching this up is that family law attorney also gets a good amount of volume, but it's almost the same keyword. So basically we would really wanna be targeting both of those keywords with this page. So what we wanna get is the keyword family lawyer Houston, as well as family law attorney Houston into this meta title. And we'd also ideally want to include TX or Texas and potentially the word best because that popped up as well a few times. You can see here best, best, I think it was further down as well. So in this case, what I would do is write something along the lines of best family lawyer Houston dash Texas family law attorney. And now you can see that we've got all the different variations of those keywords in this meta title. So it's very likely to rank for all of those variations and it's still within the character limit. So now let's go to the meta descriptions for each of these examples. The first one, Plumber in Sydney. Again, we would wanna try and include all the same keywords that we had in the meta title that we're targeting in the description as well, so that they show up in bold when someone searches like I showed you earlier. So for this example, I would write something along the lines of, uh, looking for a plumber in Sydney, at ABC Plumbing, we offer the number one local plumbing service in Sydney, New South Wales, and then call us for a free quote. And what's happened here is I've included all of the different keyword variations, and I've also included the incentive to click, which is a free quote, and I use title case, as you can see all the 
the words have the first letter in capital to just try and make it stand out a little bit more in the search result because that's going to stand out more than all lowercase letters so it just helps to draw the eye anything you can do to try and get the eye to look at your description or your title is a good thing because it's going to get people's attention so that would be my description for this one and then for family lawyer houston same situation as above I would want to try and include all the different keywords in the meta description and make it enticing to click. So for this one, I'd go with something like looking for a Houston family lawyer. Our Texas family law attorneys can help with any family law matter. Call us for a free 15 minute consultation. And this one includes all the different keywords. It has the, it's within the character limit and it gives them an incentive to click, which is the free 15 minute consultation. So that's how I would write the meta descriptions. Now, how do you actually add the meta titles to your website? I'm gonna show you how to do that within WordPress with the two most popular SEO plugins. The first one is Yoast SEO. So I'll go on the website and I'll show you how to do that. So now we're on a website that has Yoast SEO. The first thing you're obviously gonna to have to do is install Yoast SEO. So if you need to do that, go and do that first. You would go to plugins over here, install the plugin, and then you could come here. So the first thing you need to do is select a page that you wanna edit. So you would wanna to go to your pages or go to your posts and select which one you wanna edit. And then what I you would do is you would come there, you would scroll, you'd be on the page like this. You would scroll down here and now you can see the Yoast box here where you edit everything you need to edit. And where you edit the meta title and description is right here. This is the meta title, this is the meta description. So you can see here there's a snippet of what it would look like. So what you would do here is like, let's say example meta title. Here is our new title. This is just an example to show you it shows you here what it looks like in the in the Google search result as a snippet. And then same thing here for meta description, our new meta description. Click here for the best meta descriptions ever. And basically you would just type those in. And once you've got the description that you want, you would go here, you just click publish to save the page. Remember to click publish, otherwise it's not gonna save these settings. And then once you reload your page, this is actually gonna show up in the meta title and this will be in the code. And then soon enough, it's gonna show up in the Google search results as well. And now the second plugin I'm gonna show you is All-in-One SEO. This is another very popular one and it's one that I've actually started using. I've transitioned away from Yoast to All-in-One SEO. It's a personal preference of mine. Both will get the job done, but I prefer this one. I'm gonna show you how to do it in All-in-One SEO now as well. So again, you want to install the plugin first, obviously, then you would go to pages and select the page or the post that you want to edit. And then you'd scroll down past the content. And here is the all in one SEO box, similar to the Yoast I just showed you. And basically in here is where you would input the page title or the meta title. And in here is where you would input the meta description. So like I said, again, you would just edit that meta title goes here and see these Yoast uh, all-in-one SEO actually gives you the max recommended characters. And then here it says 160 max recommended for the meta description. So it actually counts it so that you can keep track of how big your description or title actually is, you know what's going on. And then again, meta description goes here. So this is just an example. I'm obviously not gonna save this, but once you've input that, you would go in and you'd hit update and now it's updated onto your website. And you've got the meta title and description that you've just input. So that's it for meta titles and description. This is really all you need to know. If you follow this guide and what I've shown you here, you're gonna have better meta titles and descriptions than most websites on the internet and are gonna be very likely to rank as long as you include the keywords that you're trying to rank for. They're unique on every page and then you do all the other SEO factors properly as well. So if this was helpful, I would appreciate a like and subscribe to my channel. I've also got a full SEO course if you're learning how to do SEO on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is put that link below as well. So you can watch all my SEO videos, which are going to help you do all the other aspects of SEO as well. And if you have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to put them in the comments below and I will actually reply to you and do my best to help you out. So I hope that was helpful. I'll catch you on the next one.